If you're struggling with confidence after having been rejected by agents or publishers or being nervous about being rejected, then this video is for you. Thanks for joining me on the sofa today. We're going to be looking at some questions that have come out of the community on Facebook for this session. So this is Bethan who joined the community a few weeks ago and she is really keen to get her self-published books published conventionally. But what Bethan is struggling with is confidence. She's had tens and tens and tens of rejections from publishers and agents. So I really wanna to speak to this situation because I know it's not just Bethan who finds herself in this situation. What do we do when we're in that place where we might have had 40 or 50 or even more rejections? I can really relate to this myself. We can get into this place where because we've been rejected, we can think of ourselves as I'm rejection worthy or I'm just not as good as all of the other people. Like, like a fact, like something that's immovable. And it's really not the case because if you think about it, the rejections have happened up until this moment so far and you've got the rest of your career ahead of you. And so it's really important to start to get really clear about where you are in that present moment. I know, I know a lot of people talk about like, hey, get present, but it's such a powerful way to reset, to, to reset what's happened in the past and to therefore reset what can happen in the future. I know when I first started to get rejections and they really knocked me off my center and I would start to think that because I'd been rejected, then the chances were that I was gonna to continue to get rejected. What really, really helped for me was to understand that I could get better, that things could always improve. And again, I know that this is something that people say like, oh, you know, come on, cheer up, things can only improve. But it's really important when we actually say these words that we really start to feel the possibility of that rather than just something that we're saying without feeling or without emotion to try to make ourselves feel better. So let's just take a moment to take stock. If you're watching this, maybe you have experienced that dip in confidence. Maybe you have experienced that moment of rejection. So let's just take a moment to say it hurts and it doesn't feel great and it really can knock us off our centre. So we accept that, you know, poor us, poor you, like I totally get it, it's really harsh. And then here's where we say, but, okay? But do you wanna give up or do you wanna keep going? Do you wanna give yourself some more chances? So that was something that I said to myself when I took some time off from my writing actually and I really started to think whether I was a fiction writer or whether I was a short story writer or whether I wanted to write in other formats. So I really started to take stock and think, okay, if I'm gonna play this long game, let me really think about the kind of long game that I want to play. And I really went back to basics and that's how I started to grow my confidence once more. So I started really simply with putting a writing practice back in place. Because after I'd had those initial rejections, my first novel was turned down by about two dozen publishers and it really, really hurt. And I was really scared of writing another one. So I knew what I needed to do was to just start to build up a practice once more so I could start to trust that I could produce a certain amount of words each day. Because then when I started to trust that, say I knew that I could produce between three and 600 words a day, which is around about a page, which is around about 15 minutes of writing, then I thought to myself, okay, if I can do that, then I can pretty much guarantee that within a year I'm going to have a first draft of another novel and then I got to a place where I thought okay if I can really start to practice if I can really start to rely on my writing practice and that output it means that if the next book does get rejected I'm going to be able to write another one after that and then I'm going to be able to write another one after that. Now you might be watching thinking oh my god how many books am I going to have to write before they get accepted? Well Maybe you're gonna to have to write three or maybe you're gonna to have to write four. But the beauty is that once you do start to get 
those acceptances coming in. Once you do start to build a relationship and find an agent and find a publisher, chances are you can go back to those earlier books and you can start to rework them so they won't have been wasted. And even if you don't rework those books and they don't get published, at least you know they haven't been wasted because they got you to where you are now, which is a publishable writer. They got your confidence back up. So that's what I would say to all of you Bethans out there who want to go from self-published to being traditionally published, but you really feel like your confidence has taken a knock because you have received those rejections. It's to take stock. It's to say, just because I've been rejected in the past doesn't mean that's going to continue into the future. And how can I start to grow my confidence by really developing a writing practice that I can rely on and to know that each time I come to the page, I'm going to be improving and each time I make a new submission gets me one step closer to finding the right agent or the right publisher for me. That rejection isn't about me and a personal thing, it's just simply a sign that I haven't found the agent who's a right fit or I haven't found the publisher who matches the kind of work that I do. And it is a long game, but it's a long game worth playing. So like I said, that question came out of the Facebook community. If you're interested in coming and joining the community on Facebook, then you'll find the link below. We would love to have you with us there. I'm live every week and I do much more Q&A in the Facebook community. I also read pages from my own private writing journal, which people are finding really, really useful, where I share the things that I myself are going through. And it really helps the people in the community understand that they're not alone. I know it can feel like that when you're working on a private creative project that nobody understands you or that you're completely alone. So that's why the community is so nice. So thanks for joining me on the sofa. Find a link to the community below. And if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, then think about subscribing and hopefully see you on the sofa next Monday. Take care till then.